Okay, so once again, I'm here at the beautiful Purple Valley Yoga Center, uh, now together with Kia and Scott. Hello. Uh, Kia, the main teacher and her assistant. Scott, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what we were talking yeah. about. Isn't yeah. it so, Kia? Yes, yes, of course. So you're basically yeah, teaching together. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's exactly how it is. Yes. Exactly how it runs. Yeah. Uh, before we started the interview, we were talking a little bit about the Mysore room, and this is where we basically realized that Kia is the main teacher and that Scott is basically <laughs> just assisting together with the other assistants. Isn't it so? No, not at no, all. Not, no, not, not, not at really. All. Not at all. No, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. the boss. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, so guys, so what are you having in common? How come you are teaching together at Purple Valley? How did it start? How did yeah. it start? Yeah. You take that, I think. Well, I I run I run in, as a Charlotte called Still Point in London, and every year I run a uh, an annual event called the Spring Gathering, which is bringing like uh, a number of different teachers together with me to just share over a weekend uh, with our community um, different elements of yoga. So we have the self practice, Ashtanga Yoga method, and then we have um, chanting, we have uh, philosophy, that kind of stuff. And I wanted to create this, um, this really great event once a year where we bring really skilled teachers in, mm -hmm. uh, 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 skilled who have really, um, with wisdom, bring them in to share with the community. And the, the weekend's very much about, it's non-hierarchical. Yes, there's people teaching, but we're all, the rest of us, listening and participating. And so I started in 2014 and I was looking for uh, a, a skilled pranayama teacher to come and um, share. Mm. And I'd heard of Kia through some of my students who'd connected with her through um, John Scott's, one of Scott's trainings. And so I reached out to her and I'd also, also taken your magazine and we've been in touch anyway, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. And I invited her over and she agreed to come. And it's, ever since then, we realized there was a, a commonality in the way we saw things. It really worked well. And, she, and, 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 and Keir comes and, and Greg, our friend Greg Nardi's there. And we found a really beautiful symbiosis with the three of us. Yes. And also we la run very similar shala. Mm, so we call yes. each other like brother-sister shala because we both have only like Mysore programs in the mornings. So it was really... Uh, valuable as well to find somebody who was on on exactly in the same place as me yes. but and in another big city like london and paris and to be able to communicate of how things work how yeah. we do things and and i felt this i felt this immediate connection with scott and also in terms of your enormous generosity to kind of open the space and and this is also something that i work very consciously with in my shala that I work with apprentices and I'm really careful not to put myself in the top and then have people working for mm -hmm. me, but that the shala is really lateral and it's in how we teach. And I felt exactly the same mm -hmm. when I came to Still Point. Yeah, so being uh, the practitioner in your shala at Purple Valley now, this is what I feel as well, that you have an extreme beautiful connection with the people that are your assistants, mm. uh, with uh, Lee and with Agneta, mm. and that you trust them a lot. So there's a lot of trust. So basically the students trust you and you trust the assistant to teach. Yeah. Like I mean, I've been working yeah. with Lee, our assistant, for 10 years. And he, and he started yeah, he's through a, coming he's through Steel Point, you, yeah. and he came through that. And that's really a really important point that we kind of everything one comes through our shalas yeah. um but yeah i just uh, jumping off of that it was just mm -hmm. it was really amazing to have someone like here and we were we had she's doing in paris what i'm doing in london and we really connected in a way of like i can ring her up and say how do you do this you know yeah. what I mean? we can or we can we're having i'm having some trouble or something like that i can like say how are you recognizing that because mm -hmm. we're exactly the same so you are having the same background when it comes to Shala. So you're both running your uh, own individual Mysore program, one in Paris and one in London. Would you say that you have some similarities when it comes to background of teachers or you are coming from different kind of lineages when it comes to that? Well, both yes and no. We do connect through John, but I have perhaps uh, practiced even more with where John comes from, which is Rod mm. and Derek. Uh, yeah. But also, I mean, I, in, in my early days, I practiced a lot with John and yeah. then we reconnect a little bit later. And then I was teaching the pranayama on one of his teacher trainings. And then you also invited me to teach with John the pranayama yeah, yeah, on yeah. like a continuing CPD. 
So yeah. in a sense, uh, John, that that lineage is the link, but also, although you haven't practiced with Rod and Derek, no. right? But no, 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 no. Uh, it comes from there as well. Because I find uh, the way you are working in the Mysore room, mm. I find that you are working in very different ways. Mm. S- but there is something that is connecting you. So, uh, Kea, you are breaking down the postures in a very particular way, yeah. which is uh, actually quite unusual. And it really resonates with me because mm. I'm also, I love going into details. And I feel that you are working a little bit more with the uh, wholeness yes. of the posture. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what do you feel is connecting you in the Mysore room when you are teaching? Is there anything, how, how do you work the Mysore room together? Because you are slightly different. Yes. But there is a connection and I have something but, in my mind that I would. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear what yeah, you think. Yeah, that's but, kind of like, I mean, we, I just see, I, I, I see it like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we don't, I haven't really discussed it. It, it no. just seems like it's a dance. Yes. And I don't have to go, I'm, I'm like, do what I do, you do what you do. And then we kind of like we flow between that. We bounce off each other, I think. And also we quite, I, I sense that we, we are still very much students, both of us. So we like to kind of pick up from each other as well and continue that. Mm. So it's not like, I don't feel like, okay, we have to do it this way because this is how I work with my students. And then, yeah. I, but rather, uh, oh, Scott's doing that. Okay, let's try it this way. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he's the same. So we try to kind of let that enrich us rather than being something that works against each other. That's what's really rich as well, is when you see your own long-term students who come through, like Maestro Yoga Paris or, mm. or Still Point, and then you, 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 you like see someone else working on, with them in a different way, you go, oh. Yeah. Like, that's really interesting to notice, rather than say, oh, no, this, they should be doing like this. Mm. I, I also look and, oh, no, I didn't think of it like that. So there's, an, there's, a, there's this continuing openness to inquiry. Yeah. Which and I really love, which I really found. Yes, that and then we also other. have like all the time we we meet up during the retreat with our assistants, mm. and we just go, we just have a little checkpoint, you know, so that the students don't feel that they are getting different messages because that's really important. Yeah. That's very important. Although, yes. the, like the bigger message has to be the same, yeah. although you approach it from different directions. So we are quite conscious about how we're working with each individual. Uh, if you see what I mean, mm-hmm. on, a, on a bigger scale, then the details is really up yeah, to yeah, the yeah. teacher. Yeah. yeah, because I find the mice room, mice room extremely open and inviting somehow. The energy is very nour- nourishing. That's yeah. really nice it's to hear. It's really, really, really nice. It's so really I nice feel that hear. we have a big var- variety of different levels mm. in the mice room, mice room at the moment, mm. uh, at this retreat. But I feel that everyone is getting the attention that they need, so you really mm. see them. Mm. So we have both the beginners and also a little bit more advanced advanced students yeah, when it comes yeah, yeah. to the postures, yeah. I think it's really important that even in the Mysore room that there's no height, we're trying to not create any hierarchy, mm. that everyone's met in a similar way. Like, and that's what's really beautiful we're having like, like over the two week period about having someone like Lee able to take beginners through, because mm. they can, like mm. we can have a beginner's course at the back of the room, he can filter them in and then we can just start to drop in yeah. and move through so that we just, it's like they're being invited into the room and so it's a process. It's not like everyone's doing their own thing. We're trying to just tailor, tailor the different needs of the different people for, what, for where they are. Yeah, and I think another thing that I feel is really important is that we have, we have a lot of fun together. Mm. So there's that sense of humor always. So we don't take the practice too seriously. You know, because then I think there could be those kind of that I want to do it this way and you shouldn't do it that way. But really, everything is done with a sense of lightness yeah, in yeah, our yeah. room and with yeah. our assistant. There's always like that smile in the background, even when things are quite hard. Yeah. Right. And there's a, I have a deep respect, deep respect yeah. for, for you as well. But with that lightness as well, because we have we know each other now because we, we're really we're really dear friends as well. Mm. I think that comes across. Mm. Mm. I think so too. I think so too. And are you teaching in, uh, in any other places together except for Paris, London, and Purple Line? Just in London, and then we're doing this. And now we're, we're doing, doing it in Florida. In Florida with Greg. Oh, for yes. the first time. Yeah. 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 So we're doing a winter gathering in Fort Lauderdale with, yeah. with Greg. Wow. So, what is the good thing about uh, coming to a, a place like Purple Valley then? You, to have a retreat in a place like Purple Valley or in a retreat center? Such a gift. Yeah. You can work in a, in a little bit of a different way, which I find is really enriching. So, so I work both with like long-term apprentices and daily shala as Scott does. Mm. And then also both of us, we travel quite a lot um, to do workshops and retreats. So 
And the difference when you work in a retreat setting is that well, you, you can, in a sense, go perhaps a little bit more intense with the practice because when you hold the shala in, in somebody's daily life, they have their families, they're going off to work after. You don't know if they slept last night even, you know, when mm. they come to the shala. Here I can, you know, people can really drop into the practice and let go. So you can you can go a little bit deeper. And also since we're working not just with the physical practice, but we've made a conscious effort of really bringing all the aspects of the practice in, it goes quite deep. Mm. So when you're doing you're doing the asanas every day, we're doing sitting every day, we're doing pranayama almost every day, and on top of that, some more kind of philosophy and detailed work. And that goes quite deep. And if you have the space to savor that and to let, let that be, uh, then that's something that I feel that people can really, you, you can take away with you and it has enriched you in perhaps a deeper way. Then you have the ability and the time for it in your daily life. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things. You should, a lot of times you step off your yoga mat and straight away you're on to the next thing. Here people can actually feel, oh, I was tired today and that's okay. <laughs> You know, or whatever comes up, emotions. Yeah, so I so, find that really yeah, yeah, rich, yeah, no, so enriching. Yeah, about and the you need both. Creative, you need both creative. as a practitioner, I think. You yeah, need so the daily support, but you also need to. The, retro- the retreats are really important because you can step away like that and you can just give yourself space. And it's mm-hmm. about, I mean, I really love the, the, the way that we can, we can, we can widen our, what we do over a period of time. Mm. And you can weave, I mean, what's really important for us was to mm. really bring the, uh, these deeper aspects and, of, of yoga in and weave them in and just see what happens. And you have over, over the two week period we have here at Purple Valley, we were able to just each day drop something new in. Mm. And also with, work, with us working together within, with me, with mindfulness and, and Ki with Pranayama, mm. we also, we balance, we try and balance each other and mm. jump off of what the other one's doing. Mm-hmm. So that so if she said something in her philosophy talk, I can then pick that up mm-hmm. and move it into perhaps a technique or some of a meditation workshop that we do, and then it comes into the mornings, and so we can weave it. Th- it's like it's a beautiful way of just creating a a, a journey, a story, yeah. Because a journey for over when a you period work in your daily shala, you have different people dropping in each day, so it's a really real luxury to work with the same group over two weeks because there's also relationships created within the group mm. and there's a lot of skills and beautiful personalities that come forward within the group that can enrich the whole experience. But you also can create that storyline yeah. that you build up to going deeper and deeper. Whereas with when people are dropping in and out, you kind of a little bit start yeah. over with the, with the room and the constellation each day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, it becomes like yeah. a, com- a, a micro community on its own during these two weeks. Yeah. And I used to, I, I think of it like a like a, a very unique yoga mala that is only here for these two weeks, mm. and then that will dissolve. And that particular yoga mala probably won't be recreated, but there's something really magical about mm-hmm. that. You, you know, it yeah, feels very each, slowly. Yeah, that's I really get that. Each yeah. each retreat, you will never be able to redo each each mm. retreat has its own essence mm. and it's our job to create something within that essence within the people that are here this is why we go we would do we do it we do we do really deep because it's really important and at the same time we there's a lightness to it mm. you know we've we have a group here and everyone seems to be having lots we hear lots of laughter at dinner mm-hmm. things like that so there's this kind of important people can let go and do the practices but also underneath that find a little bit of joy about f- meeting other people like them. And that for me is really important. I mean, the work in London and the work in Paris that we do is really important. And it's, there is that kind of ongoing, ongoing, it just never stops, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and you're right, you're, it's, even that morning, kind of that morning will never be repeated. No. It's the same, but it's kind of like, but this retreat is like an, it's a, a macrocosm mm. of a morning. <laughs> and that's really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you have your uh, meetings with the assistants uh, at the terrace area, are you discussing the students? <laughs> <laughs> we discuss just things that need the to... The progress of the students. Um, mm. More direction. So yeah. if, and yeah. also if we're picking up that somebody might have an injury or have something going on, 
uh, they shouldn't have to tell each of the teachers, yeah. you know, that if they tell one, that should be enough. And then they know that, you know, that's going to be covered. Mm -hmm. So it's more on, on that level. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so it's really important that we we all as a we're teaching as a collective. Mm. So if if one this is particular something's come up with one person, they we the rest of us know, and then we can respond as a collective rather mm. than something happens. So no one knows, and we go in again. So it's this it's this it comes back to this collaborative effort of of trying to be as open as we can with everyone, mm -hmm. and that's really important. That kind of movement through the retreat. And that's because it, it's like otherwise we'd just be going meeting in the morning and then meeting in the morning. But the evolution happens because we're part of it as well. Mm -hmm. We have to be part of it. Otherwise, we're just meeting in the morning, meeting in the morning. We have to come together so we can be as, as effective as we can as, as teachers and people who are sharing. Yeah. And do you feel that you can connect with the students, uh, students outside the shala as well? There is Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Absolutely. there is a connection yeah. with the students yeah. inside the shala and also outside the practice room. Yes, I think that specifically here in Purple Valley kind of opens up for that in a very kind of non, it doesn't feel forced on you. It's very natural and, and very organic. I feel that people are really mixing as well. Mm. It's not so much, no, people are quite curious to get to know each other, but it's also completely okay to, to step out of it and, 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 be on your own if you want that but the option is always there and i think we sit with different people every meal almost mm. and interact and there's so many interesting stories mm. and and to be told i think I and see. and also that that inspires what we teach mm. you it's know beautiful. those conversations that we have over mm. dinner or coffee that will might come up in the philosophy the day I after i think it's really valuable yeah. that we can like that there's that environment where we can connect outside of the room with yeah. people so that we can be again be more effective as we get to know people get to us that's come up for them then we can that might be able to layer a way that we help them in in the room or or with the floor or in any way the, the, the way we teach them mm -hmm. that's really important yeah and, and really i think important. also because we're teaching together we're not like when you hold a retreat completely on your own, you work constantly. But because we're there, the two of us, we have more possibility also to interact with the students in between classes. Yeah. Which is something that I normally perhaps wouldn't have on a retreat. I would be so busy just with the teaching and the planning and the. But now, because they're the two of us, I feel that kind of, yeah, I have the support of Scott. So when it's his afternoon, I can be a bit more leisurely yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the opposite. Mm -hmm. And that's really rich. It's really nice. So in case uh, you would be having a new student coming for the retreat for next year, uh, what, would they ex what can they expect from the retreat? What, is, what are the main pointers? Like, the, uh, like a daily... Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if they're new to the practice, with, we, the first week is really about learning to become independent in your Mysore practice. Mm. So whether you have done like guided Ashtanga classes before or if you're new to the practice, uh, the idea is that you would leave here with the self-practice that you can continue on your own, right? And then uh, you do the mindfulness. Yeah. So there is like this meditation in the morning. It's daily say, morning yeah. mindfulness sessions before, before class begins. Yeah, so that sets like a really beautiful intention in the room. So there is a sense of quietness before we begin the Mysore practice. And then either they are like, we like to have the beginners in the Mysore room, so in the first part of the retreat, they are a little bit, they're kind of in the back of the shala and held specifically by one of our assistants. And then as they start to progress and are able to remember a little bit, we send them forward one by one, mm -hmm. right? So at the end, it's ah. just a mix uh, of everyone. But I think it's important as a beginner to be in the energy of the Mysore room. That's yeah. how yes. you really understand how this practice works. It's really important to for me that that people feel like can be nurtured mm. there's this nurturing quality that like even when someone's coming and then they don't they've never done it before mm -hmm. they can come into this room and that they can feel they can be part of it mm. and that's always what like this retreat was like that our retreat last year was like that because we bring because we have Anyetha and Lee who are assistants mm. and we create the space for that to to, to happen we, we we want everyone to thrive yeah. Whether it's someone who's a complete beginner or someone who's advanced, and everyone can thrive together. And so, there's this 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 is really right. The way that the way that the people can come in, brand new people, be at the back, but then slowly move forward. 
and that's been that's been really lovely to see this week this yeah. particular retreat yeah now everyone sure. is doing the Mysore yes. it's only like yeah. the beginning of the second week and I always think of that but for Lee he's been taking care of the beginners that what a thing to be able to offer someone it's like after that they have their practice for life you know it's like we're learning to walk after you have your practice you have your practice what an amazing gift to yeah. go away with you know and I think when you do it more in a le- like at home in a lead class, it takes much longer. So I think the best way to actually learn is to go on a retreat or an intensive mm. so that you're kind of soaked in it. And yes. that's what you do. That week, this is my focus. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to practice. And then you go back with. But the thing what we try to, what we weave in is also the philosophy and the pranayama and the mindfulness so that uh, whether you are an advanced practitioner or you are a beginner, there's a sense of wholeness that we are trying to deepen the entire understanding mm. of, because all of this feed into each other. So I really don't think of this as an Ashtanga retreat. I think no. of it really as a, yeah. as a yoga retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. We, want really, we yeah. really want people to thrive. We yeah. want really people to come and go, this, there's the physical practice, yeah. but there's so much more. And it's mm. that so much more that feeds into the physical practice yeah. and I think in the afternoons carrying on with your question in the afternoons with Kia does her pranayama sessions mm-hmm. which is so valuable in, in in understanding how that flips back round and and, and you, she does it so beautifully in, in presenting it as the thing that we focus on during the asana everyone um, starts to just note themselves a bit differently mm-hmm. So it's really, we're really, we're really find it important to give that fullness, to, to share that fullness mm. on this retreat. So uh, last question, during these uh, two weeks, do you feel that your students now have developed and uh, what do you hope that they will be able to take with them from these two weeks? Like if you choose one thing that you hope they have been able to take with them, what would be the most important thing? Um, I just, I just want people to feel more alive. Mm -hmm. I want people to feel like they can go back to their lives and be more kind and be more compassionate and meet people and, and see that like in this environment, when you meet so many different types of people with so many different stories from all over the world, that everyone's got their own journey. And, and our, my vision is for what we share is to go, look at everyone's, we're just like each other. Mm. And so when you step back into that environment, you just, you just take an extra moment to pause and reflect before you act. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. I agree completely. Mm. I, I, yeah. Uh, it's that sense of, it sounds like a cliche, but really taking the practice beyond the mat. You know, that the, the, the mat is one thing, but then, you know, being a little bit more awake, perhaps a little bit more kind and compassionate to others, but also to yourself. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.